start the show now. Let's see here. Let's... Okay, we are live. Welcome to uh, Spiral Series Highlight Reel Episode 4. There we go. Titled, uh, more generic title this time around Broken Tear, Angelic in the Danger Room. Um, I am joined by Broken Tear, Angelic. How you doing, man? Uh, doing alright, doing alright. Uh, getting ready for the danger room, obviously a lot of preparation, you know, a lot of things need to be uh, put into motion to make uh, sure the event is really good, so that's what I've been up to. Very cool. So, uh, we'll cut to the agenda here just to give everyone an idea what the thing's about here. Um, so, first we're going to go into a little bit about our co-host, Broken Tear Angelic, and then, then we're going to go over the danger room qualifiers that we ran uh, on October 12th. And then we'll actually talk about the real danger room, and uh, Angelic will be able to give us some insight on what that event's going to be about. And then, uh, as as tradition in our uh, in our show, we have a player spotlight on an Arizona player. So, uh, Great. with Great. that, so let's let's talk about you a little bit here, man. Uh, sure. Pretend I've never met you before. Get, go ahead and give me a summary of who you are. Well, uh, I am I'm Angelic. I represent Broken Tear in the Arizona fighting game community. I've been playing uh, fighting games for a few years now. Uh, I really started breaking into the scene probably when Super Street Fighter 4 came out, because uh, that's when I like you know I stopped playing on a pad. I was like I'm gonna take fighting games more seriously. So uh, ever since then, I've kind of just been uh, playing fighting games because it's really fun to do. I really enjoy it and uh, doing my own thing. You know, um, I had a few good placings. Uh, or I've had notable placings at a few majors, like Curly, Mustache, Soul Car Regionals, um, uh, most notably Evo. So that's probably where most people uh, would say I have my success in. But besides that, I'm mainly a Marvel 3 player, uh, but I do play other games. But yeah. Okay, uh, so what, uh, I guess, what team do you play in Marvel? Uh, I mainly play Wolverine, Dormammu, Shuma, and that would be my trademark team. Uh, I'm pretty much known for playing Shumagura. It's kind of like my trademark character and uh, kind of like an identity I have. So, besides that, I do mess with Firebrand, Virgil. I have I have like a few iterations of the team, but the, for the most part, it's Wolverine, Dormammu, Virgil, uh, Shumagura. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so you said you've been messing with a Virgil team recently too, right? Mm-hmm. Going with that uh, the top um, tier there, yeah, Virgil. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's up tier, but I also I like the synergy and I like I like the ground based game that it offers my team. So that's why I would actually pick it. Okay. Um. So, yeah, and I've noticed that like, at least as as one of your training partners over the over the past couple of years, uh, I've noticed that a lot of your teams have uh, a common character in Shuma Garoth, and that is tends to be your mascot in a way. Uh, why did mm -hmm. you pick up Shuma? Uh, I always liked Shuma Garoth. I been playing the Versus series kind of like nonchalantly, I mean like I couldn't even do fireballs, but I've been kind of looking at the Versus series for a long time. So Shuma Groth was in Marvel Super Heroes, the very first one, and then he was also in Marvel vs. Street Fighter. So I liked him since then, he was just kind of weird. I thought his level 3 was like the coolest move in the game. So I've always liked him. And then uh, when Marvel 3 came out and he was announced, I kind of was like, man, I have to make him work. You know, now that I'm a real fighting game player, you know, like not... You know, because before I was just a guy that I would play them because fighting games were cool. But now that I was a real one, you know, like I had a stick, I went to tournaments, I was like, I gotta make them work. I really, I really want to kind of put a connection between my past fighting game history and my, my new fighting game history. So. Okay. And so, like, a, a big thing about that, that particular character is um, that it's, it, resources are not necessarily available to really teach a new player how to learn the game with Shuma, mm -hmm. basically. Right. Like we could, like we could go into, like there's in-depth tutorials about how to play Zero or how to play Virgil, how to do what mm -hmm. combos here and there and everything like that. But for you, uh, for Shuma at least, uh, was there anything out there that already existed, or did you have to come up with a lot of things yourself? Or there's, I don't. I would say that there was a, a few things that were out there that really laid the foundation for a lot of the things that I later came up with. Mm -hmm. So I, it's not like I had nothing to work with. Uh, the the corner combo I think has the corner combo for Shumagura probably has the basis for all of his other combos and extensions. So when people are like, I want to play Shuma, I always tell them learn the corner combo first. The corner combo 
wasn't optimized, but it was kind of known that you could relaunch with the eyes and stuff like that. I mean, that was the original intention when they gave uh, the eyes such a delayed timer. Um, so it was known that something like that was possible and somebody had a similar combo, but it really wasn't optimized to that point. So I'm going to say learning Shimo Garoth was kind of like, okay, this is what somebody done. This is somebody proved that this was possible. Now, how can I make this into like a real character and a real combo? Okay. So it sounds like it sounds like you took you took theory and and you turned it into application. Right. Right. So like, yeah, you took your calculus and you turned that into physics and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So um, I guess I, I imagine a lot of new players will be watching this because uh, they they they've seen you on on big streams and everything like that. Uh, what would you consider your uh, your training regimen? So, like, say you're taking you're picking up a new character and throwing him in the training room. What would you what What's the first thing you look for? Well, it really depends, first off, what position the character will be playing. Uh, I think the hardest character to switch would be a point character. Um, if I were to, so, for example, if I were to put a point character, I think I would mainly practice movement, uh, incoming mix-up, and making sure that my spacing was correct. I think that would be most important. For second and third characters, like third character, I would worry more about expected three combos, um, how to survive without an assist, things like that. So it really depends. Uh, second character, not to leave him out, I would practice DHCs, I would practice TACs, and then I would also practice uh, how to survive with only with uh, minimal bar or more bar, like depending on the point character that I have. Like I practice different things according to what slot they have. So uh, it's not, I mean, but in general, you definitely want to practice, you know, your combos, your extension, and things like that. But those are some specific things that maybe people haven't thought of to practice in terms of uh, when you're replacing a character on your team. Okay. So, yeah, it sounds like positioning is definitely a big, impor uh, a very important aspect of how you train a character. So, um, I guess, leading into the next question, uh, there's a bunch of different team formations out there in the, in the metagame for Marvel vs. Capcom 3 right now. Mm -hmm. um, like in Marvel 2, uh, the big, the big s scheme was point, point, assist. And then, but we, with uh, Marvel Three, we've seen the X Factor being very strong, and there's dark anchors like Phoenix and Strider and Virgil. Um, where do you see the game going as far as team composition goes in the coming years? I see. I actually kind of see the game go more towards a Marvel Two aspect, where I think point point assist will probably beat out a lot of teams that are anchor heavy. Uh, I personally have always believed that your anchor doesn't matter as much as your point character. I think a point character is far more important and stronger. You know, you can have, you can have a, a Virgil anchor, but that's not going to matter if the other guy has zero main cry team and he's killed your other characters because his point is so good. So I think, I think for now the main reason why a lot of people like Phoenix and Virgil and Strider is because this game is so inconsistent that an anchor really offers you more consistency. But I think as the game evolves and we keep playing and we keep mastering every little single thing, I think eventually we're going to be looking at another point point uh, assist uh, team. Though this, I mean, it, it doesn't mean that your assist can be a bad anchor. I think a good example of point point assist would be a Flocker team, where he has zero Virgil Hawkeye. Like his Hawkeye okay. can make a comeback; it's possible, but it's not there to. It's there to assist Virgil because Virgil's the second point character in that aspect, and he also burns X Factor too. You know, so that's that's kind of my line of thinking. I really, really strongly believe that anchors don't matter as much as people want them to matter. You know. Okay. So uh, I guess building on that question a little bit more, then. Uh, so you said that the primary assist for a team should be a in the anchor position. So then you have two point characters, or do you have a point character and then another assist for that point character? Like, uh, which scheme yeah. are you thinking more of then? Well, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Uh, I mean, honestly, there's 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 different types of situations for that, or you could maybe bypass that shell. I mean, the, the main question would be like Wolverine, Doom, Virgil. You mm -hmm. would put, even though Doom is the assist character, you put him second for the TAC Infinite. But if we're talking just a general oversight, I would put it, I would put the assist last, so you can have two characters with points, so you can have a strong neutral game. Because most of the time, the assist character with a beam isn't going to be too good with just the point character all the way in the back. Okay. So then, um, I guess, should the second character? How important is the second character to the first character? Then, do you think that they can be interchangeable? Where like you, you sh like like to practice, would you 
play your second character in first spot and then have your point be the second assist and stuff like that? Are they easily swappable, or would you rather play it out and always this have your be, point character? They should be easily swappable. Okay. I mean, it, the synergy. I think I don't think the synergy between first and second uh, should compromise the synergy of the overall team. Okay. You know, like it's not, that's not the strong suit. That's not why you would put it. I mean, sometimes it works out, but I mean, for example, my team Wolverine. Dormammu, Wolverine, Dormammu have some synergy, but honestly, it's pretty low. It's really low. I mean, I use Dark Pole for Fatal Claw extensions and mix up, and that's really that's pretty much it, you know. Then honestly, that's all I need them to do. What matters most to me is Wolverine Shuma and Dormammu Shuma, because that's how I play the team. There's two stages. Okay, very cool, very cool. So that's just a little bit of insight as uh, from Angelic as a player there. Um, so moving along to a uh, into a broader aspect, I suppose. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start talking about <coughs> this big event that Broken Tier, your sponsor, has been kind enough to put on <laughs> called The Danger Room. Uh, can you go ahead and give us a little bit of a summary about what The Danger Room is? Sure. Uh, the Danger Room is going to be three days of minimum 12 hour sets of just, or 12 hour sessions of just non-stop grind like it's going to be friday saturday sunday from the get-go i think it starts at noon we're just going to play from noon to midnight just non-stop you're going to have all your favorite players there you're going to have yipes clockwork modified viscount kinder party nerd josh myself of course you we're just going to be going at it really really hard i mean we're talking i mean the trash talk has already started i, I can tell you that for sure the trash talk has already started <laughs> uh, I personally, I don't want to lose any sets, but uh, Yipes is pretty confident that uh, I'm going to lose a few if he's there. Nice. So I got something to say about that, but uh, we'll, save it, we'll save it for the stream. So uh, make sure to tune in. You know, the event's going to be live. It's going to be hype. You're going to have all of us on the mic at one point. You're going to be able to talk to all of us, you know, ask us any questions. You're going to be able to vote uh, on who you want to see, you know, so uh, I really think it'll be a good event. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and... I, I, you briefly touched on which players were going to be available at the Danger Room. Here's a, mm -hmm. here's a just an overall listing here, um, and uh, all of them look like formidable oppo opponents oh, yeah. and uh, just some of the, the the biggest names in the fighting game community flown from across the country here. Um, I at the very end though, you'll notice that there's an AZ top eight. Can you go ahead and explain to us what that is? Definitely. So. Uh, the Danger Room is going to be a three-day event, um, but on Saturday, we're going to have a special Danger Room Cross Arizona event where the top eight players from Arizona decided via a massive round-robber qualifier are going to have the chance to go to Kugi's house, the Broken Tier home, and they're going to be there the entire 12 hours playing all of the people there. So you're going to have Clockwork versus Arizona's Finest. You're going to have... You know, you're gonna have, it's just going to be a giant rumble. And at the end of the day, we're going to do an exhibition of just straight up Danger Room guests versus Arizona guests. Wow. Um, yeah, it's going to be huge. Uh, I really look forward to seeing the AZ Top 8 play uh, the guests because I have a lot of confidence in them and I have a lot of faith that they're, some of them are really on that level. So uh, I'm very excited uh, to see what they have to offer and what they can bring, you know. Very cool. Uh, um, so. I guess, so we have our, the AZ Top 8 then were decided by a qualifier. Uh, this qualifier was held on, um, sorry, I'm going to go ahead and hide you here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Uh, we had a qualifier on October 12th. Um, this was uh, run by, by myself and Kugi. We uh, ran a Swiss-style tournament, and basically the, um, the format was you have 10 games. Every, there were 20 entrants, and everybody got to play 10 games, and they were matched up nice. with various uh, different groups in the room, uh, or different people in the room. So, like, we, we thought about doing a full-on round robin, uh, but then taking, taking into, into account how many setups we had and how much time it would take, it would mm -hmm. be, like, 12 hours long. <laughs> so instead, we ran a quick four-hour event, and uh, we had basically Arizona's best players, the ones who were super serious and really wanted a spot uh, to train with uh, the nation's finest. Uh, to uh, they, they just competed and played 10 matches. So we had an algorithm and everything that, that matched people up accordingly, and uh, these were the, the top eight in our group. Um, so... 
I'll just name them all very quickly, and um, I'd, I'd actually, if possible, uh, Angelic, if you could give me a description of like who these people are, that'd be great. Um, so we have LXG uh, White Tower LXG Akbar, who took a commanding lead from the get-go, and he just continued dominating for the entire event, and he took that that first place nice. overall. Um, mm -hmm. He was actually featured uh, as he was the featured player on our pilot episode, actually, and that's the same picture and everything like that. <laughs> Um, and then uh, we have uh, three people tied for second place with seven games apiece. Uh, RJC has SSE Tubazo, <laughs> Alphabet Soup Tubazo, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, he pl and uh, myself, and uh, has Spikeball, Spiteful, uh, various other pseudonyms. And then um, we had a four way tie. We actually had like a six or seven way tie for fifth place. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously we had to cut it off at top eight, and we actually had a tiebreaker score and an algorithm according f to that as well. That's and uh, cool. that was uh, Yazawa, Forward, Fizzy Cups, and Brain Pipe. So um, if you could... Uh, basically, we, we've all seen these names before in our, in our on our Rambat series and previous Hasbat uh, tournaments before. Well, I mean, I haven't seen Akbar before. I mean, I don't think that guy gets very high. But... Uh, <laughs> But, I mean, yeah, he's I kind of a scrub, huh? Take a shot in the dark as to what is what he's about, you know. <laughs> oh man, so yeah, that's that's a th that's that's exactly what I'm curious about. Are there any any names there that particularly stand out to you that you think are going to be uh, people to watch out for in the qual in the actual danger room event? Sure, sure. So I mean, um, personally, uh, all of the people on this list. Uh, were definitely within like the realm of consideration for who I thought was going to make it. So I'm actually not surprised at all uh, by any of these names whatsoever. Uh, in terms of people who you should watch out for, I really want to highlight the people who have the most out-of-state experience, with, which would be Akbar, Samuji, Swifle, and Forward. I think they have the most, like they've traveled the most out-of-state, so they're used to the pressure and they have the experience. You know, I know... Um, Bazo and Fizzy Cubs also do pretty good under pressure, but I personally don't think they've been to enough majors, or I haven't seen it anyways. So, I mean, I just I just think that they, if they had a little bit more, they would be a bigger threat, because honestly, the biggest killer within this game has to be nerves. You know, mm. you know, a lot of these people are monsters in and out. They know their stuff, they know their team, and they know the matchup, but I mean, nerves get everyone. You know, you can put the best player on a pedestal, you know, but if you put him in that pedestal is located on evil grand finals everyone's gonna choke unless your nerves are made out of steel you know so i think overall in terms of look out for i really i really hope to see everyone do well but if i had to pick three names to do well i'm thinking akbar forward and probably probably fizzy cups i think will probably do the best very cool just because of the teams they play and how solid they are with their with their uh, nerves, from what I've seen, anyways. Mm -hmm. Well, so one thing is that uh, forward, uh, he he's been around since the inception of this particular game, and uh, mm -hmm. he's one of the bigger names in our scene as well. But he's recently switched teams. Um, mm -hmm. If you if the viewers ever are curious about the new team, they can check out the recent Ranbat footage that's up on our YouTube channel. Um, do you personally think that he so, so he switched from Viper Doom Strider to what is it? It's Magneto Morgan Doom, right? It's more it's Morgan Magneto Doom. Morgan Magneto Doom. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So, do you think that that team is is ready for the Broken Tier House? Well, um, like I just mentioned, I think nerves are a little bit more important this time around, just mm -hmm. because it's out of state competition. Mm -hmm. So I actually expect them to do just fine. Okay. Um, very he's cool. very he's very good with with uh, high stakes situations. I really don't think even a team switch at this point will really uh, deter him from performing well. He's definitely been a player who always just gets in there uh, regardless of the situation. So yeah, I don't think I don't think I don't think the switch will damage him at all. In fact, I'm pretty sure he's going to play both teams at one point. But okay, very cool. Yeah, I still expect him to do good. So that's that's the thing is that um, we'll have plenty of time. He'll have plenty of time to explore and play multiple teams because um, right here I've got this schedule that it's a tentative schedule that was pulled up, that was put up on Broken Tears website today. Mm -hmm. um, I actually am not sure how well it actually fits on this page and if the stream can actually view anything like that. But the general general uh, 
general idea of this schedule is basically every every uh, Arizona player will get one hour on the stream on Saturday. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I've noticed here that there are two streams for this event, which is actually mm -hmm. pretty cool. Um, and then, uh, so you guys are going to be streaming Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, and right. on Saturday, like, there's just a bunch of different... So, like, from, what is it, 2, 2 p.m. to 8 p.m.? Uh, it's it's the standard one hour sets per player, and then uh, there's some Q and A I noticed as well. But uh, there, after right. that, there's some big events uh, on Friday and Saturday. So yep. um, I was wondering if you could go into some detail on some of these events, or if you're able to, because I I actually am not completely certain on what's confidential and what's not here. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I think I can give you the gist of it. I think we're it's not that it's confidential. I think we're just still uh, working out all the kinks, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's. I mean, ignoring ignoring like the like the one hour set training Q and A. Let's go straight to the juicy part. At mm -hmm. the end of the first day, we're gonna have three community volts, okay? And what we're gonna do is uh, utilizing a a website thanks to One Frame Link. We're gonna be able to let the people vote for who they want to see in a first attend. So, oh, wow. um, schedule aside, I think we're gonna open the voting maybe about an hour before it's supposed to start. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna let the people who are in the stream vote for who they want to see first to ten, and then after an hour it closes and then they play, and then we're gonna sl since it's first to ten we're gonna give that set an hour, and during that hour they're gonna get another poll uh, for another first to ten, and that's our, that's kind of what we're gonna do three times on the first day, you know each one brought to you by our gracious sponsors. Um, that way you can get the you know if you're if you're watching the entire day. You know, you're like, man, Kinder Party looks on fire. I really want to see him versus Clock. Or, you know, you can go ahead and vote. You can vote, and you can literally get the content you want. Like, it's literally, it's literally, you know, when you're looking for match videos, it's kind of like, man, I hope my favorite player is playing, period. You know, at this point, you have seven people who, you know, seven popular players, and you literally get to create your own content via this voting. So that'll be really cool, I think. Um, that's the first day. The second day... We're gonna have a special fight uh, between Alphabet Soup Tabazo, <laughs> our uh, my personal uh, family member here, Broken Tear Clockwork. Uh, that's gonna be a first ten for a hundred bison bucks, and I look forward to that a lot. Wow! Because Tabazo beat him at Evo, and I'm telling Clockwork, I'm like, man, are you practicing? And he's like, no, I got it, I got it. So I'm really curious what's gonna happen. I really am. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of torn apart because I want to cheer for Arizona, but I also got to cheer for my teammate. So I'm going to just be neutral and I'm going to try to just be the hype man here. Um, that's going to be awesome. I really look forward to that. And that's also going to set the pace for the exhibition match after that. And that's going to be Arizona versus Broken Tier with set of style. And I'm actually part of Broken Tier in this case. Boo. So that really sucks. I really. I'm Boo! Really no, I'm just and kidding. <laughs> somebody's gonna somebody's gonna draw the short straw and have to play me from the Arizona team. Uh huh. Um, but that's how it's gonna be, uh, and that's gonna be super awesome. It's gonna be eight v eight, I believe, because we have seven, but Kugi's filling in, so we're gonna have eight. Oh, so Kugi's gonna be playing in this in this exhibition. Uh, Kugi's also another landmine. I honestly think he's the dark horse of the entire thing. <laughs> you know, you can sleep on him, and uh, he's definitely gonna hack and slash with Virgil. You know. <laughs> but uh, so it's gonna be eight on eight, and what set of style? And you know, you're just you're just gonna play. You're just gonna run straight across Arizona, straight up. It's gonna have to put its talent on the line. You know, I really want to see where we're at, and I think this is one of the best ways to do it. You know, I also think it's one of the best ways to showcase Arizona players. So if you think that you have what it takes to be on stream, you know, and earn that glory and fame, you know, then this is your chance, you know, you want to, you want to swag out, swag out on Yipes or someone like that, you know, <laughs> what really matters, you know, sure, Put sure. Down. so I really hope some people got, you know, I really hope people are bringing their A game or their S plus game, whatever you want to call it, because <laughs> that event is going to be hype, that event is going to be super hype. Very cool, very cool. Um, at, at, so I noticed here at the end there's something about Professor Viscont's Arizona <laughs> team breakdown too. I actually, I have not talked to you about this one at all. Like, what is that? <laughs> uh, I, I think we're still working on that one. But okay. I think, you know, the consensus was that Viscont would kind of rummage through the Arizona teams, like the Arizona players, and kind of talk a little bit about their strength and weaknesses, things like that. Oh, that's it's really still cool. Beat decided. 
because I don't even think that Scott knows he's doing this. <laughs> but, but I mean, it's just it's the whole schedule is kind of like a working. Yeah, working. yeah. For the record, this is this is pulled from a tentative schedule listing on the yeah, Danger Room. Yeah, tentative. This thing's gonna be changed. Sunday's not even filled in. Sunday's to be decided. So, Doctor or Professor, excuse me, Professor Vasant. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Professor V. Uh, Arizona team breakdown should be hopefully a learning experience for all of us I think okay very very cool um, so let's see what else I got here um, so again all of this was it was completely made possible by uh, by Broken Tier uh, so I wanted to give them a quick shout out and a thank you for uh, looking out for the Arizona community and uh, giving us all a shot at the the big 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 names and for t for Kugi for like flying out all these players and putting on a show for the general FGC for all of us to watch. Honestly, to me, it sounds like a reality show. It's gonna be like three days of of like you know raw action like that. Where I don't know. I just I think it's really cool. And uh, so I wanted to oh, give yeah. a personal thank you. I, I mean I can already tell you right now the it's gonna be pretty fun. I think you know we're gonna be just playing together, living together. I fully expect. My, or my goal is to see if Vasant ever, you know, you know, I want to see if he's faithful the entire time, you know, because you got people, you got, I'm not gonna say anything, but you got some people, some very real people like Yipes staying in the house, you know, it's hard to remain pure around that guy, you know, he's a, <laughs> he's a, he's a good man, you know, so I want to see a lot of other things, you know, and I think it'll be interesting, you know, shout out to Kugi Broke It's Here, obviously my uh, my sponsor, my good friend, you know, always making it happen, always looking out for the scene. I've said it for a long time, and I'll say it again. I really think Broken Tier is, I think, I just think that they've always had the scene in mind when they do things. And events like this really, really prove that to me as a person that, uh, you know, doing, you know, for somebody who, who just started started a company after being a player, you really see Kugi giving back to the community. And that's really important to me. You mm -hmm. know, so shout out to them once again. And uh, all the other sponsors, Mad Cats, Gamer Media, uh, Spiral Series, of course, One Frame Link, so... Thank you, thank you guys for making this all possible. Well, very, very cool. So, um, yeah, that pretty much winds up our coverage on the, the danger room there. Um, and uh, so I'd like to move on in the agenda here. Uh, as is traditional for our show, we have a player spotlight. Um, this time it's on SSE Ninja Nam. A, uh, a good friend of mine and a good friend of yours, Angelic, uh, I nope. actually, I was holding back, because I've, I've been wanting to do a player spotlight on Nam since, uh, basically, one, the inception of the show, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but the thing is, I needed to have somebody who knew Nam really well, uh, to be there to, to, to talk about him, and, uh, I would actually, I, like, honestly, you're probably his, his coach, I think, and so, um, I thought I'd I like if you <laughs> <laughs> I figured you'd be able to shed some light on this player. Yeah, yeah of course, of course. So uh, Nam is a uh, relatively new uh, player in our scene. He goes by Ninja Nam, um, and uh, he plays a myri myriad of different games. Uh, one of the things that I've uh, I honestly have no recollection of him actually joining the scene. He ju he just he was just there one day, and we all seemed <laughs> to know him. Like, I don't know, like, there's just one day we were all at Haz's house, and this guy was playing, and he was, like, our best friend all of a sudden, and we were like, yeah, you, feel, you're yeah, awesome. It feels like that. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I don't yeah. remember n him not being around, but apparently he's he's still pretty new. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but he's been making his name recently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he, he also takes really, really awesome pictures. Um, <laughs> but he's been making his name recently uh, uh, as a, in, in, in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, uh, he uh, has picked up Team Nemo and been doing really, really strong <laughs> in our uh, in our <laughs> bad season. <laughs> His name also in the stream is Robot Ninja. So, like anybody on YouTube is missing out, but the stream is going in on this guy right now, or something like that. Um, let's see. Uh, so, big tournament appearances, Devastation, Evo, Hasbats, our recent Ranbats. Um, you'll actually. He is featured on the pilot episode of our show, uh, one of his matches against Tubazo, who is also going to the Danger Room. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so, like, Nam is, he's just popped up out of nowhere in this season. Um, so, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> again, he takes wonderful pictures, and he's got a... <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man. Why would you upload these? This is exactly <laughs> what you didn't want to happen. Yeah, we, we totally jacked these from his Facebook, and it was pretty awesome. <laughs> so any, anyway, um, so uh, thoughts on Nam, Angelic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Ninja Nam, obviously a really strong competitor. I think, you know, like he said, he kind of showed up one day, but I actually met him at a friend's house who played anime games. So he showed up to me in a di like he kind of just appeared all of a sudden, but it didn't happen with the Kanakon community. It happened somewhere else. Huh. So I think that's just what he does. You know, <laughs> true to his ninja name, he just kind of appears <laughs> and he's just there. But uh, Ninja Dom, very strong player, uh, really known for making not like I don't want to say Nemo shell. I want to say more Spencer Strange shell. So more like Fall Team Loop based teams work really well. Mm. The original team, as far as I can remember, was Iron Fist, Spencer Strange, you know, and uh, he used that for a very really long time. But, uh, you know, after much coaxing, I think we finally got him to use Nova, and then Team Nemo was born for Arizona. So that's kind of what he's known for, and honestly, that's kind of what he's been riding to victory in the past few tournaments. You know, I think he's a really strong player who has, um, I think he got, I think he's just a really strong player. In in terms of mental strength, and I think it's a really, really big deal because, uh, as I mentioned earlier briefly, I think nerves are a huge, uh, huge benefit. I mean, if you got nerves to steal, you're going to go very far. Mm -hmm. um, but I think Nam has a really good composure overall, and I think that's a really hard thing to have so early on. So I actually think Nam's problems are a little bit easier to deal with. You know, he actively thinks, which is a really huge benefit. Yeah, he's and, a smart uh, guy. When he plays, he, he's yeah, really thinking. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, he's really thinking. And that's usually the hardest thing for new players to do is that they don't actually actively think while they're playing. They kind of just do stuff. It's kind of just autopilot, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like, I know I'm supposed to go in, so I'm just going to keep going in and going in, you know. And he doesn't really do that. So that's a huge uh, benefit to him, huge plus. Um, I really think that's a strong suit. Besides that, I actually think his execution is pretty good, even though... At the last tournament, he failed to fall team loop every single time I said that he <laughs> You know, did. But I think Poor that, yeah, I still think his execution is pretty good. The fall team loops are not easy, and he practices on a PS3 and then comes to an Xbox uh, tournament. So for him to pull it off consistently, for, for the most part, you know, Sans last tournament, I think it's a pretty good, pretty good uh, tribute to him being a strong player. Um, besides that, I would like to touch up and said, I think Iris is terrible, so I'm really glad he dropped him. <laughs> <laughs> I know he puts a lot of pride, he puts a lot of pride on having learned Iron Fist. Yeah, I, you know, I'm sure I would too if I wasted all that time. But anyways, <laughs> uh, I'm glad, I'm glad he did, I really wanted to make that a highlight of the show, you know, him dropping Iron Fist, being him like the best decision in the world, you know. Uh, I'm a big proponent of playing what you like and making it work, but man, that Iron Fist was working. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Oh man, and so like Dom is also uh, associated with Spiral Series Enter Entertainment as one of the main Marvel commentators. Uh, mm -hmm. So you guys have will have probably seen him on our YouTube channel, uh, commentating on the Rambats for Marvel. So he not only places high, he talks well. He uh, he uh, sleeps really well with teddy bears apparently, and he loves yeah. kung fu characters. <laughs> very uh, very photogenic, you know. <laughs> Those are all very nice pictures of him. Very cool, very cool. Mm -hmm. So that is Ninja Nam. Thank you very much for performing so well um, a in our most recent season and uh, for stepping your game up and helping improve the fighting game community in Arizona here. Oh yeah, I think people, or I think players like Nam who actively think from the get-go but aren't like at the highest level are really good stepping stones for other players. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, because in the beginning when everyone learns how to play the game, everyone just kind of like mashes into each, in, into each other like a, you know, like a, tri uh, a car accident. Everyone yep. just goes high speed straight at each other and then eventually one car was just heavier than the other or something, you know. Um, but having a player like Nam who kind of just tries to outsmart you even from the beginning um, when he was first starting out playing to now when he's starting to feel uh, like he's getting the hang of the game a little bit more and he's winning a little bit more, mm -hmm. I think it's a great tribute to our scene. You know, players like that are very, very, uh, very rare. So, you know, shout out to him for being such a, such a great guy. Yeah, I, I personally have found him to be, like, he's really pushed me a lot in, in recent months uh, just by how quickly he, he, like, he leaps and bounds better than he was. Like, he's just been improving so rapidly to the point where it's putting a lot of pressure on me to keep, uh, 
basically try to keep ahead of him and that doesn't always happen and sometimes he surpasses me and other times I catch up mm -hmm. and like that's always a really good thing to have in any scene it's just to have it's basically a rival um, he just pushes other players to the point where they they need to improve and then that's really good for the scene um, and then uh, in particular his his uh, team Nemo uh, giving us that matchup experience is invaluable and yeah. yeah, like for the YouTube people, like he's right there on the stream. He's also a mod, so robot yeah. ninja. <laughs> robot ninja. <laughs> yeah, he loves that. Hand. Yeah, he loves the one hand, uh, the one hand uh, emoticon there. I'm not even tied <laughs> it though, but I'll give you the shout out. One hand, one hand. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I think that's pretty much all the material we have for the show this evening. So is there anything else you'd like to uh, to talk about, or anything you'd like to say? Uh, while you well, got that mic here, I definitely like to uh, re-congratulate everyone uh, who participated in the round robin or the round, the semi-round robin, whatever it ended up being. It's a sw yeah, yeah, it was a Swiss tournament. Okay, the Swiss tournament. You know, for qualifying, entering the danger room. I'm sure a lot of people uh, have worked really hard, and I'm sure people have everything to prove to the world. You know, it will be streamed. So, like I said, this is your big chance. You know, a lot of a lot of people have the dream of wanting to travel to tournaments, wanting to be sponsored, wanting to win EVO, you know, whatever it is, I think this could be a good goal for you and a good stepping stone. So practice hard and uh, make sure to bring everything you have, you know, come with open minds because honestly, a lot of the players there will be able to teach you a lot more than you ever thought you knew, you know. So uh, that's, I really, I really want to get that point across specifically to the Arizona players. And then I also want to, if any of the participants are listening, I also want to say that you should probably not underestimate them because a lot of them will probably put you, uh, will probably put you on notice really fast if you slip. You know, mm. like Marvel gets there's it comes a point in time in Marvel where it no longer like everything is just one touch kill, you know. And even the best player, you know, even Justin Wong will lose if he gets touched three times, you know. So everyone should be on their guard and be on their A game because I really expect some blow ups to happen, but then I also expect some uh, some serious sets to happen, you know. If somebody underestimates you and then uh, you blow them up, I expect everyone to turn up the, turn it up to the next level and then uh, make sure you don't get blown up again. You know, <laughs> I expect that from both people. You know, I, 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 you know, like I said, I, I personally believe in the exhibition. I have a bet going with Tabazo. I think the Broken Tier team will win, but that doesn't mean that I think it'll be close. So, I get you. So yeah, like this is this is gonna be just intense. Me, intense. I, don't, I don't think it'll be free. Excuse me. I <laughs> I think it will be close. That if if everyone brings their A game, you know. Basically. I don't, don't want to see a bunch of choke artists there. I don't want to see <laughs> the jitters. I don't want to see any type of jitters. I don't want to see any of that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. So. Um, I guess yeah, that pretty much concludes the show. Uh, again, thank you very much for for uh, for everything, Angelica. Thank you for mm -hmm. for coming on and hosting and helping promote this. And thank you for p uh, helping put together the event in general. Like that's again, it helps out our scene a lot. Yeah, no problem. Thank you again to Kugi for making this possible as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kugi. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. So with that, what we will call it a night here. Uh, thank you to all of our viewers for tuning in. And uh, we will catch you next time on the Spiral Series Highlight Reel. Have a good night. Good night, guys.